next day. And uh, there it is. It's uh, got some pins in it because uh, a little bit had to be added on for the nose where I made a mistake. And the, um, I should remind you that I was still using this, what it's called, styro glue. It has no uh, tackiness whatsoever. Um, now that those pins are coming out in a minute, and I'll just put a teeny little bit of filler in around the nose. A bit broke broke off from the uh, lower jaw, but that's that's great. That's what happens with the delicate parts of sculpture when they're when they've aged a bit, because uh, the wood rot would would get to that. Maybe some late night revelers try to dangle from it or something. Right, the decision is going to be whether to um, whether to paint it or not. Most medieval wood carvings and indeed stone carvings were painted. I rather like it like it is. I like I like the scales effect I got with the the hot pin, and uh, it's. The other thing is, it's kind of tempting to build some wings onto it as well. She might look good on that corner. Carvers might have got overexcited and just tacked on some woods with wood, some wings, woods, woods with wings, some wings. Just finished that off this evening. Called Kellen Bray just came up with a post on Tabletop Crafters Guild, and uh, it's a something. It's a thing called the Guild Build Challenge or something, and and the comment on this was didn't make the cut, but here's the photos of it anyway. So I, I guess he entered that competition and was disappointed not to get acknowledged. But I thought this was just brilliant. It's just like a heaving mass of ick. Uh, which I definitely think I want to recreate for my own uh, tabletop D and D use, and it's um, it's made out of expanding foam and uh, aluminium foil and little marbles or something to make those globular things, and it's just awesome. But it gave me the idea, um, so I shall I shall keep that to remind me. Um, I'm thinking about how I can uh, sort of decorate this this yard and uh, I, I've got my note there to remind me I'm going to have my um, ooh, that's a thing <laughs> hmm, hadn't thought about that it's just occurred to me as I'm I'm uh, filming this and talking about it the guard robe shoot is supposed to come down here dropping the effluent into the hole that goes down into the uh, septic tank there and that's the back door um, there's a, a huge dung heap near where I live and some stables, which is actually crosses a public footpath. And this is a, a rickety load of planks that go across it. So I could well adopt something like that. But anyway, that that I, that picture from uh, Tabletop Crafters Guild has made me think that just a just a junk heap with some really disgusting looking things in it in would might be the sort of thing that would be in a, a medieval yard as well as maybe a few barrels and boxes um but yeah but that's uh, i'm having an idea as i as i talk to you the idea of having a having a problem here with just the planning of the uh, of the sewage and maybe the dung heap spilling into it and having to have some planks to get across it would uh, would work, um, but mean, mean, meanwhile, I've, I've finally plucked up the courage to stick this down. So now there's no floor. There's never going to be a floor unless I ever get to detail the inside. Uh, and at that point, I would have to actually slice it with a hot wire. But it is now stuck down to the foundation blocks with the um, styro glue, and it's had, um, as usual, overnight to set. But I notice a problem. Um, I noticed that the foundation blocks really should have been laid so that they're all level at the top. It's one of the things they're supposed to do. Um, and it's an error on the side. It's even more of an error uh, on the front. Um, 
but errors are made in real buildings so I'll, I'll have fun with doing more more things like this I already put in a little one there anticipating it a long time ago but I'd forgotten about it so I'm gonna to have to cut more of these and use them as little little filling blocks um, you can sort of imagine one team of labourers laying the foundation blocks and then the carpenters coming along with the, the frame which would have been prefabricated and saying that's no good they're not level um, I did just as just the last thing I did before I stuck it down was suddenly had a thought about this precipitous edge there that didn't leave me room for a doorstep so um, I, I cut away some and I'm going to make uh, a doorstep block there that would have been tucked under that plinth and will allow me um, a, a chance to make a nice sandstone doorstep that's been uh, eroded in the centre. Um, if you see really old doorsteps in uh, castles and things, they're usually eroded in the, in the centre and that'll be fun to make. But for the rest of this evening, it's cutting out little bits, getting them to just the right thickness, poking them in to fill and plug these holes and uh, painting them and trying to make sure I can still mix up that right uh, colour of red again. So it's going to be another long, patient, fiddly evening. That's going to be my treat. I'm always working on other jobs at the same time. I'm working on a Halloween mask at the moment and uh, getting bits of gold leaf all over and into everything. So if there are little glittery bits on this. That's why that is. Long gap this time. It's been about a week and a half since I've been able to do anything on the project at all because I've been so busy with uh, photography and uh, uh, an art exhibition doing stints on the desk and a children's event and all sorts but I, I never stop thinking about it even when I'm sort of frustrated at not being able to spend any time on it and I saw this this picture came up on my Facebook feed it is uh, credit is uh, women walking down Gold Hill on Shaftesbury 1950s Dorset England photo by John Gay and I just sort of stopped to look at it because it's a, a lovely picture and it's got timber frame buildings in it and it's got thatched roofs which are showing signs of decay. This nearest building actually looks like the, the upper half is tiles and the lower part is maybe thatch. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, but then I noticed ah, something that I have forgotten to consider in the sign of the silent woman. What do you notice? Chimneys. And of course, all these buildings today have still got their chimneys. You very rarely see them belching smoke anymore. So, uh, chimney. Now, it's not actually too much of a problem um, that I forgot the chimney, that's an afterthought, um, because I've actually seen medieval timber frame buildings where you can see that the chimney was put in maybe 50, 100, 150 years after the building was, was built. And that's because the, the sort of design to integrate a, a chimney didn't come until long after timber frame buildings had sort of established their traditional ways of, of um, being built. Um, and so the, the, the chimney is kind of just, kind of just cut into the end wall that's what's going to happen here uh, now it's, it's it's believed that chimneys came along really with the norman conquest when you first started to get norman stone keeps <clears throat> and you you then have buildings with more than one floor and so you didn't want the smoke going up and just seeping out through the roof but long long time after the norman conquest you would still have the uh the the, the, the medieval hall or the medieval cottage had uh, a, a very high main room and a solar, which was the, the, the bedroom for the most important couple in the house, which was sort of like a box um, and the smoke sort of went past that and still went up out the roof. Um, so I think what we're definitely going to have to 
do a, a, an added on chimney and it's going to go on here on this side wall. Just started thinking about the base. <coughs> At the time, uh, this, the, the, the upper layers were all down on the floor and then I needed to clear floor, floor space and when I put them on I thought, ah, that's the, that's the only wall where I can sensibly put the chimney. Cause this, this would have been a street and I don't want it blocking the, the ginnel and I just don't think it would look right around the back. <coughs> so it's going to have to be here. This would have been the side road. It would have but jutted out into that a little bit. Coach um, wagons and things would have knocked against it on, on bad cornering. Um, but then I noticed that, of course, we've got the uh, the jetties. So where it's going to stick out here, it's going to go into the building there and come out again up here somewhere. And again though I couldn't tell you where or when or show you images of it, I'm sure somewhere I have seen that. I've seen where the, the lowest part of a chimney is outside a building and then the inner part actually goes up through the building. Um, and that's what I'm gonna have here. And like, like the whole rest of it, it will be sensible at the bottom and then it will get crazy at the top. We might do some nice uh, Tudor style twisted brick chimneys or something like that. Ah, never mind your fancy, expensive Proxon hot foam table cutters. I've got the cheapo Chinese hot wire toy and I've got it taped down to the edge of a table so that it's overhanging by about three or four mil and it's going to give me Lots and lots of little bricks. Now, admittedly, I've got to cut my foam down to that size first with my serrated pizza knife, which isn't doing it that any good, but I think it's going to be okay. I might adjust this in a moment, make them just a little bit thicker. But uh, it's doing the job for as long as the batteries last, anyway. doorstep is in place and the the little spaces have been uh, just dry brushed. This is the former for the chimney base. It's just a bit of old um, cardboard from food packaging and I've built a base of um, stones being a extension of the foundation blocks there. And then I'm working on bricks, so I've mixed up a sort of orangey terracotta. That's about 50-50 uh, burnt umber and cadmium orange acrylic paints. This is that mixture dil diluted. And tiny little bricks, which have taken me well, an hour or more to make. And they are... Uh, five millimeters by five millimeters by a centimeter and they're going to be stirred into that and then uh, laid out on a sheet of polythene to dry and uh, if they didn't get a good enough coating they may have to have a second um, a second go around in that so while the little bricks are drying and indeed, while I've been doing other little bits on the ground floor, uh, I have been marking out the uh, timbers for the first floor. And um, something I'm going to do here, because that bit there is going... This is where it starts to go crazy and where we're starting. We would be out of scale and... the. The, 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 the fantasy, and at least the fantastical, is just kind of stepping up one notch. Uh, these are going to be windows, and notice that with uh, multi storage timber frame buildings, of which there, there can't be very many in the country, I've only seen a few, but thinking particularly of the one in uh, Spawn Street that's in the videos at the, the very start of this series. On, once you get up to that first floor, they do this strange thing with the windows. The windows are at mid-level and come down to the floor. Uh, I don't really know why. I don't know what the explanation for that is. 
Uh, it may be something to do with upper floors sometimes being used to uh, house looms. So you needed a um, you needed light coming in uh, at sort of you know, knee level, waist level. Um, so that's that's split into three. This section is split into two. And the reason that I have numbered all the windows this time is uh, learning from how blooming fiddly and time consuming it was to make these windows down here. If I've numbered them all, I can actually use the pieces that I cut out uh, to cut down into the um, correct sizes for the, for the window frames. And uh, providing I don't somehow lose those numbers later or muddle them up when I start cutting them about, uh, putting them back into position will be much easier. What I've got to do next is start thinking about uh, some pieces of floor. I'm going to just use foam board to fill these gaps here. I could do whole floors, um, but uh, as I'm not planning to deta detail the inside probably um, that would that would add weight so in order to really try to keep the weight down even though foam core doesn't weigh very much at all it would pile up with all the extra foam core on each floor um, so I'm just going to start shaping and cutting pieces of foam core to uh, fill in these uh, gaps where the jetties overhang it's uh, just gone one o'clock in the morning and uh, I've had a busy day I've got a busy day tomorrow I should be going home and going to sleep but what I'm doing is I've mixed this uh, acrylic paint and the uh, filler again and I am building a wall out of teeny tiny one centimeter bricks and uh, like the only time in my life when I made a real wall. It's going to need a fair bit of cleaning up afterwards. But it's happening and it's interesting. And uh, it's making me think I must be mad. But there you go. So I've stuck in the pieces of missing floor in there, the bits that will overhang into the jetties, but I think that may have been a mistake because I've got to get the hot wire cutter in to cut those windows out. Uh, it may now be a struggle, so I may have to break that out and to fill the gaps with the, the filler. I may have to yet break that out in order to cut those windows out, either that or I'll have to cut them out with a knife uh, that might be easier actually and uh, meanwhile the chimney is uh, finished or at least the laying of the bricks is I had to do it in three working sessions it's taken ages and ages and ages I had to let the, the third dry and then the next third dry and you can see I even ran out of um, coloured bricks towards the end I was running out of the mortar and uh, it was drying it's going going off just like real mortar and I didn't want to stop and mix anymore uh, it will need cleaning up um, several some of the some of the excess mortar can just be picked off with a fingernail and then the individual bricks that I don't want marks will be touched up with uh, with paint which you can't do with real bricks and uh, I even I, whereas I'm talking that I sound exhausted I'm ready for a sit down and a cup of coffee. I'm rather pleased with my chimney. I've even put little tiny, almost indistinguishable black marks here and there because that's what happens to old bricks. They're the ones that have been a little bit too close to the wall of the kiln or have been on racks. Good luck.